Dr. James Wilson from the University of Pennsylvania Perlman School of Medicine, thank you for joining us today. You and several of your colleagues have published a review article in the June issue of Human Gene Therapy Clinical Development. This is a new companion journal to Human Gene Therapy, which is published by Marianne Liebert, Inc. Your article is entitled, Lessons Learned from the Clinical Development and Market Authorization of Glybera. Glybera was approved late last year in Europe for the treatment of lipoprotein lipase deficiency. It is the first commercially approved gene therapy in the Western world. Dr. Wilson, let's start from the beginning. When and how does the story of Glybera actually begin? The disease uh, that you described uh, that Glybera is attempting to treat uh, has been the subject of investigation for many years, but really some investigators from Vancouver, where they began to study the initial molecular genetics of this disease, and then uh, started to consider ways to treat the disease, including enzyme replacement, which didn't work, they then moved to gene therapy and really formed the basis for the preclinical data that ultimately led to the clinical trials and then the product. Your lab developed the vector used in the Glybera product. Could you share with us how this all came about? Yeah, it's an interesting story that the vector, which is called adeno-associated virus, or AAV, was discovered in the 60s or the 70s, really, uh, as contaminants of preparations of adenovirus. There were six of them discovered. The first of which, called AV2, was developed as a vector in many applications, but basically failed. In my lab, we decided to try to improve on the performance of AAV2 by creating a vector based on one of the other serotypes that had been discovered a long time ago, and it was AAV1, a postdoc in my lab, Weidong Zhao, who cloned it, vectored it, and we showed that it was much better at transferring genes into skeletal muscle, which is a target organ for the Glybera product. This was then licensed to a biotech company that ultimately ended up in the hands of Unicure, who then commercialized the product. Was this disease a wise selection for pioneering the commercial development of gene therapy? I think it had many of the features that we refer to as the so-called low-lying fruit. Um, for example, this is a recessive disease, genetic disease, due to a defect in an enzyme. So the gene that would be the subject of gene therapy is clear, which is the normal version of the gene. In fact, they actually use a hyperactive version of the gene. Uh, in addition, the target organ was obvious, which was muscle, which is the tissue that normally expresses this gene. The disease is a severe disease, so there's substantial unmet need. Patients die from recurrent pancreatitis. And importantly, there are metabolic measures that one can non-invasively evaluate to determine whether the gene is there and being expressed, which initially was based on um, triglycerides. Now, your review points out many limitations of the clinical development of Glybera. What were the positive aspects of the clinical development system and uh, regulatory approval of the product? Well, this was really a pioneering effort, and like all pioneering, pioneering efforts, it really had fits and starts and twists and turns. But at the end of the day, the community in Europe, the regulatory community, the physicians, the scientists, patient advocacy groups had to come together and ask the question, is gene therapy ready for prime time? Is it ready to be commercialized? And, and two very positive aspects emerged from that, those discussions. One was safety, that they deemed that the product, a gene therapy product that would confer long level expression would be safe, at least in, in patients with severe diseases. There, uh, there were no no-go issues that arose based on immune toxicity or carcinogenesis. The second was related to manufacturing since there had been no previously approved product in this space in the West, uh, we weren't really sure what the standards would be, what the requirements would be. So in fact, uh, they met those, uh, realizing that it's probably a low bar to begin with. Those are two very important areas in which this product seemed to pass. And uh, why did it take four tries to eventually achieve market authorization? I think this was very complicated due to the fact that this is a very rare disease. So it was hard to design large-scale studies, and they were really limited to non-placebo-controlled studies evaluating metabolic parameters before gene therapy uh, and then after gene therapy. And, and the bottom line is, is that their primary clinical endpoint, which was a 
stable reduction in triglycerides was not met in this in their clinical trial. So they had midway to, to change direction and look for other types of uh, metabolic surrogates, which they uh, did eventually satisfy the regulators. And a, uh, and a, a, a retrospective-like analysis of episodes of pancreatitis for which there were trends. So the f efficacy data weren't really that strong, but in light of the acceptable safety profile, they did receive, fortunately, market authorization with some, with some pretty substantial uh, post-marketing monitoring to further evaluate uh, how this uh, therapy is working in this rare patient population. Dr. Wilson, once again, thank you for joining us today, and congratulations on the review article. I think the whole Glybera story opens up a whole new chapter, and gene therapy is a viable therapeutic option. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much.